uh, we continue um, what we were saying. As, as you as you stop it, there is a red line between the old skin and the new skin, between the old man and the new man, between becoming one day immaculate or pure and being immaculate. From, by a gift, a special, unique gift uh, of, of, of the redemption, still Jesus on the cross. She, he is her savior. Uh, remember that she's not parallel to him. She's coming from him, but before time, before his time. She's coming from the cross, but before the cross. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is there is a red line that we can't cross, and I think this is very important to, to, to sense it and to see it in the gospel. Where do you see that red line expressed, which well, here's the immaculate conception, between her and me, there is a red line. I mean, there is, there is a difference, if you prefer, than a red line. We are invited after to join, to receive the immaculate conception, to receive her, or be received, or, or understand that she already is carrying us. No? When the apostles go and see her, she didn't believe only for herself. From, from 3 p.m. to 4 a.m., she didn't believe for herself only. She believed for all of them because she wasn't, you understand? She knew that she was different or that she could do this and they couldn't. So she's a mother. She's the new Eve and she's the mother of the living, the new hearts are coming from her. You see what I mean? In her, she has all the hearts and she's just giving them. Okay? So, when she believed, for instance, uh, uh, from 3 p.m. to 4 a.m. that he will rise, she's not saying, oh, these bad ones. No. She knows that they can't. Uh, do you see the difference? Yeah. Yeah. And this, you feel it more in St. Luke. When St. Luke tells the story, he's not accusing them. He softens the judgment. While in Matthew and Mark, it's more, the text is more aggressive against the people who didn't believe. While Luke is like almost excusing them, saying, well, this is how it is. Are you with me? Yeah. And this is very interesting. This is, a, I would say, a more refined perception of the truth. Uh, and remember, Luke is, is Mary, and Luke is telling us the story from Mary. He knows things that only Mary can told him. Yeah. You see? So, he softens the edges and says, well, this is like normal. This is what happens. So, Jesus is not blaming. He blames it when he rises. He says, oh, your, your heart is very slow to believe, etc. But throughout the thing, he's not really, it's not aggressive against them. Okay? So what I'm trying to say now is that they go to her, finding that she was carrying them. When I go to her with my old broken, old skin broken, I go and find the new skin in her and from her. You see? So, remember, when all the apostles are uh, uh, gathered around her in the upper room, it's not just because, ah, oh, we want Mary amongst us. No, she is the one who gathered them. She is the one who was the good soil, capable of believing and believing for them. It, it is inevitable to meet Mary at a certain point. It's not optional. It's not a, a personal a preference or devotion. It's vital. I need to have a new heart. So I need to go to her. I need to have recourse to, me, to her in order to get my new heart because I failed. I gloriously failed. You see what I mean? But she won for me. She was there in the resurrection for me. Are you 
Do you see now the bridge opening something for you? That you can reach the moment of resurrection and not the moment of an apparition. Are you with me? If she was carrying you, you you are in her, you are in her thoughts. She is carrying all the good soils, the future good hearts are coming from her. She is the mother, she generates them. No? So from 3 to 4 p.m., 3, uh, 3 p.m. to 4 a.m., she's carrying us. So when I go to her, I find my heart, my new heart, from her. I, I gather, I draw my goods from her. So when the apostles were around her and praying and waiting for the Holy Spirit, they were around her before. So now, you could almost accept your failure, but still use the correct bridge in order to go from 3 p.m. to 4 a.m. with her and live the resurrection, the fight first, then the resurrection, with her. Because in this case, he is rising as well for you, but you in her. Are you with me? So, if from one hand you have bad news, the bad news of our failure, on the other hand, there is a mother who has been has been victorious, who won for each one of us. Therefore, there is a path, there is a, there is a bridge already set up for us. Are you following the, 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 the point? So you see, so the immaculate conception is yours. It's your path into the newness of the new skin and the resurrection, the seed of the resurrection. The immaculate conception belongs to you, is a gift from God that you are supposed to use. Having recourse to Mary allows you to get the new skin at the image of her skin. So you become immaculate, but not conception. We are all called to become immaculate. We are all called to have a new skin. We are all called to be purified, be pure, in order to see God and meet God. <coughs> From where will you get this? From her. Through her. With her. <coughs> you see? So, do you understand? How the magic conception is something that is deeply revolutionizing your personal life. You can't just live without the immaculate conception because you know that you are an old skin. It's just another way to say old skin, new skin. It's another way to say uh, the three first soils of the parable of the sower and the good soil. Do you remember that? Yeah. Uh, I, I would like you, when you read the gospel, to constantly see that, that red line that parts deeply what is old from what is new. The parable of the soul. Remember, I would say because this is the central par- parable. Do you remember? Sorry, I'm crossing my arms, but not because I'm annoyed, it's because I'm <laughs> So, uh, not because, you know, because it's not right. But it's something important. So, the Matthew chapter 13. It gloriously failed. For well, the heating. The heating gloriously <laughs> failed. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember. My, my legs are remembering. Yeah. So, anyway. So, <laughs> <coughs> so, Matthew 13, parable uh, of the sower. Jesus is not, remember here again, he's not telling the story of the seed. 
He is not questioning who are you following, because he says you are following Jesus. We are in either of these columns, <coughs> this one or that one. But he will say, now how do you follow me? How do you receive me? Can you receive the seed of resurrection? This is the seed. The sower came out and, and was sowing. What did he sow? He sowed the seed of I will die and I will rise. You see what I mean? So, did it enter in the old skin? So when you read the, the, the parable of the sower, you need to draw a red line between what and what? Yeah, no, in the parable of the soil, you have four, four soils. Exactly. You have first, first soil, second soil, third soil. This is asphalt. Second one is a bit of depth with stones. And the, four, the third one is a good one, but it has throw a thorns that will suffocate the, the tree. Then, this is where I want you to see what do you do? Red line. The good soil. The good soil. Good soil. How could you name the good soil? Today? The Immaculate Conception. The Immaculate Conception. The Immaculate Soil. You see? The Immaculate Conception is in the Bible. It's in the Gospel. Why? The on, only the good soil bear fruits. Remember that. This is why we have a red line. The red line says what? So you see how the immaculate conception is very practical. Because you can bear fruits if you have a new soil, if you have the good soil. Who gives you the good soil? Your good soil is, is at the image of whose soil? Her. There is only one type of good soil. One type of being immaculate. We are immaculate, but not conception. We are called to be immaculate, but not conception. We are called to be pure, but not conception. You see what I mean? So we need to draw our soil, the new soil, from simply the good soil. Because none of the others, none of the above, uh, is capable of receiving the seed of the resurrection. For instance, you see where the, the, the immaculate conception arrives? Do, do you see that? The Gospel of St. Luke <coughs> starts and shows us a red line as well. What is the red line? Beginning of St. Luke. St. Luke has two annunciations. You remember? Double door. Exactly. So, we have two annunciations. And here is the red, li the red line. Annunciation to Zechariah. And, of course, the couple, Zachariah, and later on, uh, Elizabeth will, will appear. And on the other hand, the organization is to the other couple, Mary. And Joseph is there, discreetly present. Okay? So, there is a red line. The red line means what? One annunciation worked. The other one didn't work. When he was speaking to Zechariah, Zechariah doubted. He didn't believe that he will, um, uh, um, uh, that his wife, who is very old, can 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 uh, have children, yeah. can get pregnant. So, red line. We cross the red line. Mary believes, and how does she believe? She believes for herself and for us. Remember how we did it. Yes. Huh? For herself, 
the angel says you will conceive, she says how will it happen? Uh, he says the Holy Spirit will come, the, uh, the, the uh, Messiah will overshadow you, etc., etc. Okay, then he switches to what? To compensate the annunciation that didn't work. And here, behold, your uh, uh, cousin is pregnant at her sixth month. Ooh, do I believe that? So she had to believe as well that that, that was true, it wasn't a lie. Because Elizabeth hid it. Before the annunciation, the text says that Elizabeth hid it because, you know, she's old, so let us see or how to end. You know? So she believed for herself and for us. Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 411, says she believed in the name of all human nature. So it is a way <coughs> to say we have here, to acknowledge, we have here a capacity that our others don't have. Name it whatever you want, magnetic conception or, or, or good soil, whatever, but it's there before time. And we see that nobody will have this characteristic. We'll all, they, it will, they will all be sifted. The people, the Jews will go, the people who can't bear what he says will go, then the majority of the disciples will go, then John and Michael will go, who will remain only one, Mary. But there is a red line between them. Okay? So the most, the strongest old skin will bear, but then will break, then. So we are acknowledging the existence of a, of a mysterious newness in her. We acknowledge that newness throughout the centuries, and finally, 150 years ago roughly, the Pope Pius the, 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 the Ninth declared, uh, first went through something, I will tell you a little bit about it now, and then he declared that she, she's there, she's holding the church. John Paul II will say something that is very close to Pius IX, but he will say it in his own way, and it appears in the Catechism. I think he takes it from Hans Ulf von Balthasar, but it's his, it's his as well, and now it's in the Catechism, so it's ours. He says, and I mentioned it before, the Marian profile of the Church precedes the Petrinian profile. What does it mean? Marian profile, profile of the church. So the Mary, which is Mary, related to Mary. <coughs> so the, the Mary's aspect in the church, or relationship, or presence, or existence in the church, precedes, comes before the Petrinian. Petrinian comes to, to Peter. Peter is, 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 uh, is the Pope, is the magisterium, is, is, you know, the church, what we call believers, no? So, the church itself is saying, I am not the first. She comes before me. I am me. Yes. This is why, when you look at the cross, <coughs> and Jesus' side is opened, be very careful. Don't jump to conclusions saying, ah, this is the church coming from Jesus' side. Like, oh, we always say it. Now, the first being to come out of Jesus' side is the mother of the church, is Mary. Then the new Eve, Mary, and Jesus will conceive together. No, you understand, in a, in a, in a spiritual redemption way, will conceive the church. Or he, using her, will conceive the church. So it's not the church that comes first. She comes first. This is why Paul the Sixth, Pope Paul the Sixth, I think it's eighth of December sixty-four. I don't know. I can confirm it. He declared Mary mother of the church. Now he knew you would say, but he declared everybody, all the bishops, clapped and stood up. It says the same. It says we, we didn't start. The apostles failed. So how could you say the church comes first? If the apostles, who are the best amongst us, failed. You have to recognize that she is the one who is holding everything. 
And if the church is the church, it's because of her faith. And John Paul II, in his Antigonal letter, I'm repeating what I said before, in his Antigonal letter, Redemptoris Mater, <coughs> um, 87, on Our Lady, says in the third part of the Antigonal, he says, the faith of Mary becomes the faith of the church. Mary believed in the resurrection. And this faith, this faith, not my faith, this faith I received. So it's our, her faith in the resurrection becomes our faith in the resurrection. It's not she believed and you believe. No. Otherwise, you'd be what? Doing what? You'd be doing old skin with new wine. You'd be saying, I believe in the resurrection. This is why it, it, took, it took Peter a whole lot of, 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 of humility and failure in order to understand, put his nose in the, in the dirt, in order to understand that, Peter, you can't follow Jesus. There is a moment where you have to go to Mary. Of course, there are plenty of questions who will arise in your mind. You know, what about all the people who don't know about Mary, etc., etc.? <laughs> I, I know, I know. But the parable of the sower, the parable of the sower, which to me speaks about Mary, of course the text doesn't say a well, word, but it says good soil. Uh, remember, the tradition, the Maronite tradition says that the good soil is Mary. They sing it in the church, in the, in the Mass, they are Catholics. And the Byzantine rite as well, the, you have a, a song, a hymn that you celebrate. Uh, in, 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 uh, in August, preparing for the Assumption, where you name Mary the good soil. Okay? So, um, I forgot the last one. The wedding feast of Cana, you said you would explain. The? Wedding feast of Cana. No, 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 that's. We will go ahead now. It's too. We have no. Yeah. Oh, the lost sheep. I'm <laughs> found. You're found. <laughs> so, what, what, uh, what I was saying, I forgot now. Yeah, I was saying the faith of Mary becomes our faith. So it's not my faith. So when the Pope or the Catholic says that the Marian profile of the Church precedes the Petrinian, we, it should even be understood further, like the Marian profile becomes the profile of the Church. What do we say in the Mass? Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the Church. Look not on our sins, old skins, but on the faith of the church. Now, question. What is the faith of the church? Look at the apostles who gloriously failed to believe in the resurrection. What became, what be happened to their faith? They had to go to her in order to review <coughs> what they thought they could do alone. We are going back to 3 p.m., but with her, humbly, following her, carried by her, in order to reach the resurrection and see that she opened the way for us in her, not out of her. So look not on our, uh, look not in our sins. Faith of the church is the faith of who? So, now let me just close with the story of, of Pius IX in order to help you see something that is not always seen about the Immaculate Conception. You know that the Immaculate Conception um, has been declared by Pope Pius IX in, in, in Rome. Um, I think he's a blessing, he's blessing now. Yeah. Blessed, not saved, but blessed on, on yeah. yeah. So, okay. Say again. 1854. Yeah, 1854. Yeah, yeah, of course. 
1854. But it's very interesting to discover what happened before the Immaculate Conception. We could say that Pope had, from his youth, a great devotion to the Immaculate Conception. As you know, from centuries, we had two groups fighting on the Immaculate Conception. The Franciscans and their friends, and the Dominicans and their friends. The Franciscans from one side saying Mary is Immaculate Conception, and the Dominicans saying no. They are not saying she is not pure, they are not saying she is not Immaculate, they are just disagreeing on the timing, which is the case as well of the Orthodox. The Orthodox churches do not say that Mary is not Immaculate. They say we disagree on when. We consider that she is born with a sin and immediately after God removes it. But we say no, not even. From the first second there is no sin out of the merits of Jesus on the cross. <coughs> so she is saved by Jesus before time and before even, even, even receiving the, the stains or, or, or the damage of the, 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 the original sin. So there is no trace of old skin in her from, from the beginning. So she can't break. It's a way to see it. Okay? So, Pope Pius IX, the ninth, the ninth, is living in Italy a very difficult moment. You need to remember that. It's very interesting. This is something I discovered years after. And, and there, I had to go be there in order to, to see it. Um, the Pope, the Italy, uh, you, you, you know, the French Revolution happened in 1798. Uh, 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 we killed uh, the king and all his lot. And we had trouble. I say we, because the French. So we had trouble, uh, civil trouble. And it takes time until it settles. But it's horrible when you think about it. Mm -hmm. So the classic <coughs> order of having monarchy, the peaceful, I would say, metaphysical understanding of life, of having always a king, you know, it's a very interesting effect on, on me, for instance, to arrive in, 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 in England in October 2001 and see, wow, well, I'm in a monarchy. Wow, never tasted that before. But we had it before. So this order, this I would say almost metaphysical order, is broken in France. And will start to spread in other places. And amongst them, Italy. Amongst them, Rome. Remember the Rome at that time is partly belongs to the Pope and partly doesn't belong to the Pope. And there are fights on that. There are fights. It's a telephone, it's not somebody. <laughs> so, <laughs> there are fights between the republics, not the republics like the United States. The republics who want the republic, they don't want the king. The republican spirit, there is a fight against whom? The king. And the king of that place is whom? The Still the Pope at that time. We are toward the end of the, the, the remains of the Middle Age. So the Pope is the, the, the head at that time of the land at that, of, at that time. And you need to know that the trouble reached an atrocious dimension. The Republicans killed the Pope's Prime Minister. On the stairs while he was coming down. The Pope flew to fly? Mm -hmm. Flew? Yeah, yeah. Fled. 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 Disguised in the best, not a priest, in a, in a priest, <laughs> not, simple priest. In a simple garment, the garments of, of a priest. So you understand that the Pope feared for his life. His life. Yeah. And who is the Pope? Is the head of the church. So the church, in a way, is seriously menaced. Menaced? Menaced. 
Menaced. Is menaced compromised? Menaced. No, not menaced. Like uh, aggress aggressed by. Okay. <coughs> so, where did he go? <coughs> he went to Gaeta, another, which is southern, uh, south from Rome, going towards uh, Naples, uh, Napoli. And this, uh, this uh, place, you can still visit it today. The city is called Gaeta. And he <coughs> spent there a few months. Nine months. Very interesting. Nine months. From November, if I'm not wrong, 47 or 48, 48 I think, till August of 49. He's praying. He's fearing for his life. Agaeta depends on the Austro uh, Empire, mm -hmm. so he's protected by Austria, France, etc. But he's not protected in his own country, I mean, in, 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 in Rome. So he's away from Rome in order to remain alive. And we have a little crypt, chapel, crypt below the, the church where he was living. And this crypt is called the Immaculate Conception Crypt. You can go there, visit it. It's the golden crypt. You can find pictures of it. It's beautiful. So this is where he prayed. He prayed to find help. He prayed our lady. It's at that moment, during these months, that the Pope thought of the Immaculate Conception and seeking a future, not immediately, because he consulted the whole church, he consulted all the bishops, he consulted all the, the, the theologians, the, the universities, etc. He didn't wake up in the morning saying, ah, I want the marriage to be immaculate, so therefore, this decree, uh, and all. No, you see? So, do you see the context? Do you see the red line? He's incapable. He, fe he, he feels that everything will, will, will fail, will go, he will die. You see? Do, do you see the point? Yes. There is a red line here. He discovered his radical incapacity of doing anything. He, his prime minister was assassinated by the Republicans. Revolutions. Italian revolution. So, you can say it's an act of devotion, you can say whatever you want, but in his understanding, the, the idea of declaring the dogma is born at that moment of total and absolute danger for his own life, and therefore, to a degree, the rest of the church. Okay? You see the point? So, now, let us wrap up. Uh, because we are... Yeah, reaching almost two hours now. Let us now come back to the initial point of the, the today's talk. You remember my starting point. My starting point was, hopefully, I would like you to reach a point where you will wake up, you will wake up, sorry, you will wake up, you will wake up. I need to wake up. You will wake up tomorrow feeling that there is a connection between you and the mystery of the Immaculate Conception. The presence out of a, a, a needed decision from God to have Mary coming out from his side first, but before his coming, in order what? To be able to follow him and, and, and him helping her, I mean, to open the way for us in order to what? To believe. Mm -hmm. Remember, we are not discussing in the parable of the sower the seed. We are not discussing resurrection. We are not discussing the goal of your life. Is it Jesus or not? We agree that it's Jesus. But we are discussing. Am I capable of receiving the seed, yes or not? And the Immaculate Conception is about us, our capacity to believe and follow Jesus. Okay? So, 
Immaculate Conception is about my radical incapacity at a certain point you might have gone through it you might be in it you might be still waiting for it but there is a point in the Christian life and we know it from the gospel we know it from the analysis I, I made of the gospel that there is a point where I discover that I fail in following Jesus to a degree if we follow Luke I'm not to be blamed because it's normal because I'm weak because I am old man, old woman, old skin whatever, you see what I mean and I need to acknowledge that I need her faith not my faith let me just conclude with, with one thing from the I, I mentioned it before but I'd like to take it again from uh, St. John's Gospel uh, the wedding at uh, Cana I will go just through two, two or three things three days later I would like you to place yourself three days later do you see which three days later he rose three days later there is a wedding the wedding is between whom and whom the only virgin the only wise virgin who was waiting for the only groom are you with me are you, are you with me the wedding is the meeting between the wise virgin Mary waiting from 3 p.m. to 4 a.m. for Christ the groom. You remember the parable yeah. of the yeah. wise uh, virgins and the, yeah. Yeah. and the other ones? The foolish ones. The foolish ones. You remember that? Yeah. Jesus yeah. said you need to be vigilant. You need yeah. to, be, uh, to wake up, etc. And, to, yeah. and you need to imitate the, the wise, for the five wise virgins who had oil in their lamps. In their lamps. Well, I don't think there are five. It's only one. There's only one virgin having enough oil for all of us who was there for us and for herself and was waiting for the, for the groom to rise. Come back to rise. Come back from the dead means to rise. She received him. And they entered in the wedding, in the meeting. The resurrection is a nuptial, has, has a nuptial dimension. The resurrection has a nuptial dimension because Mary represents all, crea all the creation, the new creation. Jesus represents the groom and they meet. Finally, we have the final, the final form of everything, meeting the, new, the risen Lord with the new creation meeting the risen Lord. So we are contemplating, in fact, in the moment of resurrection, we are contemplating the end of time. We are contemplating the, res the end result of everything. And the end result is the perfect meeting between the divine seed and the renewed, the, the new creation, Mary. Okay? So, <clears throat> three days later, there was a wedding. Hear it as you want. I hear it this way. The mother of Je I'm jumping. The mother of Jesus was there, and Jesus and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited. <clears throat> when they ran out of wine, since the wine provided for the wedding was all finished, this is a translation of a longer version. The mother of Jesus said to him, "They have no wine." Red line. Red line. She has the wine. We don't. But she wants wine for us. She's the mother. Do you see that? They have no wine means they don't have the capacity. They, they need the redemption, but they need as well the, the capacity. They have no wine. She believed in him. She knows that he can. He will do it. 
Jesus said, woman, the new Adam is naming for the first time the new Eve. Woman, you remember, in Hebrew, is Isha, like in, in English, woman. Isha is taken from Ish, woman is taken from man. Finally, says Adam, when he sees the new Eve, he says, this one, this one is flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. This is why she will be called woman. So Jesus says, woman. What is he saying? Jesus is immaculate. Mary is, if Mary is immaculate, she's immaculate because of him, not because of her. All her being comes from the, the pure and the holy, Jesus. Remember, we are not, otherwise it's, we are not Christians. He says, she is flesh of my flesh. The immaculate comes from him. She is not a parallel principle or a parallel source. There is only one source. Jesus himself. So her coming out of his side, she is the one, the first one who comes from his side. When she comes out of his side and he looks at her, what does he say? Woman. He names her. He names the new creation, the new, the, the new Eve. The only, the only creation. He names her. Woman. But between the lines, he's saying, she is flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. It's even stronger than the Eucharist. Are you with me? The Eucharist, he says, take and eat. He says, it's almost like the Eucharist, no? So when he says to, he says to John, take her, she's your mother, He's, he's giving, he's giving a, a lot. He's giving his own flesh, his own bone. She's born my own flesh of my flesh. Therefore, she will be called woman. And he says to her, woman, what is between you and me? What is there between you and me? What is this mystery? What is the link? It's me here speaking. I do not pretend to offer the the best interpretation I'm offering, but an interpretation. I think we are invited to enter in the mystery between him and her. What is between you and her? People who, uh, amongst you, the person amongst you who, who bought the book The Interior Life of Mary, according to uh, Monsieur Ollier. Mm -hmm. Monsieur Ollier, who is a predecessor of Grignon de Montfort, is meditating, is contemplating the relationship between him and her, and nothing else. <coughs> when he mentions the interior of Mary, he is mentioning Mary, who is capable of embracing Jesus in her. Mary is capable of containing Jesus in her, with no obstacles, and there, are, there is no place in her that is not filled by the Holy Spirit and by Jesus. So it's contemplating the relationship between Mary and Jesus. When we contemplate, when we pray, we have Mary only as, as a statue and then Jesus another statue. But in fact, this is separating them, that we cannot separate them at all. It's impossible. Okay? So, <clears throat> what is between you and me? My hour has not come yet, or another translation says as well, my hour, my hour arrived now, starting, because this is his first sign. You can take either, it's not a problem. Either my hour, my hour then would mean the cross, or you can say my hour came like I'm starting my ministry, and I'm starting my mission now, and I'm head, I will be heading in the end to, to the, uh, toward the cross. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. What did she always do? 
she was always capable of listening to him and putting what he says into practice. Today, in the first reading, God speaks to Eve, the, the first Eve. What does he say to her first thing? What did you do? What is the thing you've done? What is the thing you've done? Yeah, what is the thing you've done? What did you do? So we should ask this question to our lady. We should ask this question to our lady. What do you do? What are your acts? The acts of faith, act of obedience, act of listening to the word of God and putting it into practice. Remember, all, all these things we, we, we show. His mother, out of her union and experience with Jesus as the new Eve, said, Eve sorry, says to us, do whatever he tells you, whatever. Even <coughs> if he says things that you can't believe or not, you have to believe. So she is transmitting her faith in him. She believes in him. But now she says, do whatever he says. I know him. It's like, I trust him. I know him. My faith, I'm giving you my faith. She is the ladder. The ladder to reach heaven. Okay? <coughs> I have to stop here. Uh, this, we will come back to Cana kind of Galilee plenty of other times in the future. But I just wanted to give you a uh, Few, uh, just a few pearls in the end and uh, I just hope that uh, you will use and I think this is the, the, the practical side of, of the, this uh, lecture is to use the Immaculate Conception understand that it's a treasure understand that it's the only treasure the good soil but now it's about, it's about using the, 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 the Immaculate Conception. What would you do then as a consequence? Would you go alone in your faith? Would you invent your own faith and your own faithfulness to Jesus? Or you would say to God, give me a heart, my heart that is inside of her. You see, her faith becomes my faith. My heart is already in her. You see? See, this is the thing. It's very important when I pray. Of course, Jesus is the goal. Remember. Jesus is always the goal. Mary is never a goal. But I need, in order to receive the seed, to be like her. So I say, Jesus, give me my, the heart, like the heart of your mother. Or oh, Mary, give me your heart, so I can... Love Jesus, not with my own capacity, but with your capacity. Not to believe with my capacity, but to believe with her capacity. And so on. And this is the meaning of the rosary. This is the meaning of us getting closer to Mary, like the apostles around her in the upper room. You see? So this is, is very important then now to... And I think I would, I would leave you with this as a homework... To try to think and, and, and fish out means to apply the Immaculate Conception. So the Immaculate Conception becomes something that you can touch every day. You say, yes, I see the red line. I see where I am, where she is. And, but the gift of the Immaculate Conception belongs to me. Remember that. The Immaculate Conception belongs to us. Her eyes belong to us. Her faith belongs to us her heart belongs to us we need to use them this is our treasure this is your money in the bank ok so let us say thank you in a short prayer to God to Jesus to our lady for all what they have done for us please Jesus give us the wisdom of seeing understanding how Mary is essential for us, how we are not better than John and Peter, and like them, we have recourse to Mary, who believed for all of us, who waited for Jesus and for his resurrection. Teach us, Jesus, in the Gospel, how to see Mary, how to understand her, in order to love you more, to know you always more, because you are everything for us, Jesus. 
Give us this height, this depth, this purity of Mary, so we can see you and love you and serve you, not with our capacity, because we are old skin. We need the new skin. Give us, Jesus, the new heart that comes from Mary. Give us, Jesus, this resemblance, this likeness to Mary, so you can see her in us and through us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You understand that the best way to prepare to receive Jesus and Christmas when he's, he will be born is to receive him in Mary and with Mary. So uh, an excellent uh, time of Advent, full of grace.